Hey there, YouTube friends. Mass Bandit here. Thanks so much for hanging out with me today. Always do appreciate it. And welcome back to another uh, look at the South American DLC for Planet Zoo. This is going to be the first animal-specific habitat that we're going to build. And actually, this is kind of bigger than what I'm going to be doing with the rest. This is what I was really inspired to do um, when I heard the announcement of the DLC and when I saw the animals and uh, the llamas are something I was really looking forward to, and so I thought it would be really fun and kind of out of the box and different to go ahead and build a llama farm. Uh, so, and I know most <clears throat> most of the research I was doing, it was alpaca farms, but we're gonna go ahead and say llama farms. So what we have here is we have a North American grassland map, and what we're going to do is I'm gonna bring you in at different stages throughout the build, and you will, I'll talk a little bit about what I'm doing and how I did what I'm doing, because, you know, sometimes there's some things you might want to know. And by the end, hopefully we'll have a really nice little llama farm. So, let's get started right away. First things first, we need to have our layout. Uh, the thing about this project is it's not going to take up the whole map, and it's not going to be very big. So the very first thing I wanted, and I really don't care about guests, actually. You're going to notice that the zoo entrance is not even connected, and I don't think I even connect it. But what I did do is I figured a lot of these, uh, at least here where I live, a lot of these llama farms, and apparently there's a bunch, <laughs> are off in the country, in the, we call it the hill country and uh, small you know, small little establishments along country roads. And so that's kind of what we got going on here. This will eventually be a four-lane highway, two lanes in each direction, and this will be a two-lane highway. Uh, you can see that this is obviously more narrow and just a really straightforward, simple, simple idea so far. Uh, maybe we'll do some crops and stuff. Uh, or for I'm not quite sure yet. We're going to see as we go along. So here, though, <clears throat> the first thing you're going to see <laughs> is this little roadside, <laughs> little roadside stand. You know, like those totally, like, janky places that you see the, the little handmade signs on the road for the Bro Ranch Llama Farm. If you've been following me for a while, especially my Planet Coaster stuff, you know that we've had lots of Bro projects. We've had, obviously, No Name Landia for Bro Coaster. We've had uh, Bro Acres, which was the Halloween farm we did. We had uh, the Bro Christmas Village. So this is something I like to do. So this is kind of a nod to Bro Nation and our awesome community. So, uh, well, let's follow the sign. <laughs> And I know we're going to go fast. I am using the in-game <clears throat> the in-game Jeeps for scale. They are actually pretty small. So, But here you can see this is the beginnings of the property line. And you can see here we're using some of the new pieces in this DLC here. If I open this up, we have the new wooden beams. And we have the new bamboo recolored to look like old wood. And I, oh, I just, that, I think, does a great job of creating this kind of farm fence and uh so that's something i'm going to be doing a lot in this project is trying to use these pieces in interesting and different ways not necessarily the way that uh the dlc wants you to use them that's kind of what i like to do so got some tall grasses and weeds growing here and then here's the main entrance to the bro ranch llama farm and here's some more of here's some of those uh, awesome signage from the new DLC recolored and if I pull up just a little bit you're gonna see the makings of our parking lot I think I've already gone in and I've measured uh, so we can have lanes here and lanes here not very big I would assume this would not be a very big tourist attraction in fact this is probably just more of an operational farm that maybe they rent you can come and pay money to take a tour or you can rent it out for weddings i was surprised at how popular of a thing that was going to an alpaca farm for a wedding so yeah this is just just the rough bones so far but you can see this is going to be the space that we have to work with so let's let's skip ahead and see what's next so it doesn't look like there's a lot that's changed here, but this was quite a bit of an undertaking to get it to work. I realized immediately how difficult it was going to be to do to make this the way I wanted it because we have to. We're stuck with these in-game fences here. But I did pull this fence idea all the way around, which I really enjoyed. And we have some llamas! Check it out, we have some llamas. Uh, they've had babies, you know, we've got quite a bit. I've turned welfare off now that we have the babies. I've gone ahead and turned all the welfare off. So they will stay this size forever. I've, I've basically turned off all the animal options. So that's pretty fun. 
But they're in here, they're playing around, and right now we have two pens. The second pen back here has a couple llama llamas, and it also has some ostriches. One of the things I saw in some of my research were emus mixed with alpacas, which I think are pretty cool. Uh, we don't have emus in the game, so ostriches to me make a nice substitute, another big flightless bird. And they go well together, they don't fight or they don't mess around, and even with welfare turned on and animal options turned on, they don't mess around. I'm actually going to be leaving this the way it is, because if this was like a farm that, you know, a couple owns, that that's what this is going to be. It's not going to be as nicely integrated as you might see into in a zoo. And so what I'm doing over here as well is trying to show that we can go ahead and have these two be connected. Um, it was at this point that I kind of got lost. I kind of got in the weeds a bit. I'm not sure. Oops, I wasn't sure where to go from here. Like this doesn't, I know we need a farm, but if we have a barn, but if we have a barn, then the corrals should be connected to it somehow. And that led me down a spiral for um, uh, research. And I researched and researched and researched layouts and all that. And so don't get attached to this because in the next update, it's gonna look a lot different. Uh, so I think there's gonna be a pretty big jump uh, between what we have here and what we have next. But what I do want to show you, one thing I'm super proud of, check out the hose. That is, again, this bamboo piece. I think these bamboo pieces and the posts might be my favorite parts of this new DLC. They are going to be all over this build, but you can see that it does hook back up to a water spigot here, and I'm really happy with the way that looks. I think that looks pretty okay. Pretty happy with it. So let's jump ahead and see what's cooking. As you can see, we have a big change here from the last uh, from the last section. This whole pen is gone, and everything's been rearranged, and we have this barn in the middle. You'll also notice all of this awesome clutter. I'm going to tell you right now, look over here. All this clutter here, all these pieces that I'm using, these are from the workshop. I did not create these. Um, in an effort to expedite the process, if there was something amazing on the workshop that I could use, you better believe I'm gonna use it. So what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and create a collection, a mini collection, with all the items that I've used, <clears throat> and that way, and it'll be in the description below, and that way you can go ahead and download them yourself in one click. And there's some great stuff, like these animal trailers are fantastic, and these trucks, and all of these cars, and the, the uh, tractor and all this clutter there's some pallets that are great so stuff like that that other people have already done such a good job that's why it's on the workshop go ahead and use it is kind of what i say so let's take a look at what i've done though so you'll see here in my research apparently if you've got a barn and you have animals there are two ways to raise them you can have different pens or you can have pastures now my pastures might be a little small but for now they're going to be just fine so uh, these green areas are the pastures. We have one, two, three, four, five, six pastures. And the animals would rotate through them. And you'll see we've got some in these two pastures here. Um, and then this, the brown here is going to be like the holding pen, like in this area here, and indoors as well. Like uh, really inclement weather, or if you need to isolate some, or like, you know, for whatever, if you're weaning them. and different. There's different uh, scenarios that require animals to be separated from each other for different reasons. Um, that's what this area in here would be for. And if you look, you'll notice that they are all connected. What we can do is we can shuffle animals from anywhere to anything else that it's next to. Like from this run here, they can reach any of the pastures, which is really kind of cool. Uh, that's something, again, that my research was showing me. And then they have a barn. And one of the things you want to have in your barn is you want, they say overhangs are great. So we went ahead and we have these overhangs. And it has to be big enough to get um, materials in and out. You got to think about hay storage and stuff like that. And Because even if they're pasture raised animals, they still will need hay for when they're in here. And so that's kind of all things that I was thinking about as I was building. And this is a lot of those new beam pieces. Uh, most of this, in fact. And you'll notice we don't have in game a wall set that has horizontal wood planks. So if I open this building up, you're going to see that these are individual planks and these are some of the new pieces that come in the DLC. Super, super flexible. Really pleased with these. Um, 
really happy with them. They, they, they made this building possible, honestly. And here we have some of the new doors and we're, we're, uh, what are they, we're, uh, um, oh, I didn't finish. <laughs> I didn't put the beams in between. There's supposed to be beams in between here. Uh oh. <laughs> I'll have to make sure I finish that. So, uh, <laughs> these are supposed to be those doors where the bottom or the top can swing open so that llamas can stick their head out without getting in, uh, getting out and all that stuff. And I am not going to do a full interior with this. I just, I don't see the point in it, but you know. And these little details here are actually from the East Asian set. I think they look kind of nice. And, uh, so, so pretty straightforward, pretty simple, nothing all that fancy about this barn. But then again, barns are utilitarian. They aren't, they aren't necessarily fancy. You'll notice that this side is not paneled either. We still have some work we have to do. Uh, it'll get done, don't worry. And then once I realized that I had all this and it was looking good, I realized I couldn't put any animals in because I didn't have any facilities for the keepers. We still need uh, keeper huts and we still need a... Um, trade center and all that stuff and I didn't have that I originally tried to attach it to the building but it looked super gross so what I did is I made this storage shed uh, that's what it's supposed to be like maybe this is where they store some hay or maybe there's more equipment in here and what it really is is it's really the trade center and the uh, keeper hut uh, for these uh, pastures so that's how we're making this work and what I really like is this pasture here with the ostriches is in it, they can actually go in here and they can come around here and they can hang out. And occasionally you'll see a llama come hang out under the overhang. There you go. There's one. Come and hang out under the overhang. And I just love that. I think that's so fun. <laughs> I just, I really, really, have, really pleased with how this is turning out. So now some other things we're going to be doing is we have to make some custom gates. We have to, uh, you'll see, we're going to replace all these beams with wooden beams and that is a one by one process we have to fill this area in with some things and then we also have to build a farmhouse uh, the people that live here they need a home and so we're going to build a fancy farmhouse uh, one of those historic farmhouses and uh, that's kind of where we're headed we also have to fill up the area around it i don't want it to be just this now the whole map i'm going to tell you right now the whole map isn't going to be filled most of this stuff is not going to be filled but we're going to do hopefully this half of the map make it look like this fits into its surroundings we don't have any street markings yet so there's still a lot to do so let's keep trucking along so we can get this uh, so we can get oh uh one more thing one of the things i was researching we're gonna say that this would be in a moderate climate like the one i live here in uh here in texas ignore all the poo um and in a more moderate climate like that you don't need to have four-sided barns three-sided barns are plenty as long as they are well ventilated which is why i'm using this wall set which i've never used before so simple little overhang, simple little lean-to structures for the animals to go ahead and get some shade, get some cover from the elements when they're out to pasture. Trying to make sure that no matter what pasture they're in, they have some cover. So there's only one right now, but we're going to throw some more around here. They talk about um, making sure that the back, the back wall faces prevailing winds to block wind. Um, that's not something that I can consistently do with this little uh, example, but... Yeah, so we're gonna push along here and keep plugging along and getting it filled in. So not too much to discuss in this little update. We did go ahead and uh, custom wall this side of the barn, so now it matches the rest. I'm pretty sure that uh, I never, yeah, I haven't done that yet. I'm not sure if I ever do, but <laughs> it'll be done by the end, I promise. We have our custom gates now. Our custom gates look something like this. It's a really kind of rough estimation of what you would see. I looked up cattle gates. And they're basically just on a hinge on one side and they open up. And I tried to make it so that they would all open up reasonably accurately so that they wouldn't like hit each other. And so I think what you could actually do is you could almost open this one halfway and open this one all the way to funnel them directly into here. I would have a gate here, but the, the game, the, the, the distance you need between the areas, I can't, it's too, too small to fit two gates in and it's too big to fit one gate in. So we're just gonna leave it like that. Um, You'll also notice over here, uh, I started to replace the steel posts with wooden posts. And that's just a little trick you can do. I don't know if you, I'm sure most people know how to do this, but if you don't, you go into barriers and you click just the post and you can change it to anything you want. You could change it to brick, any of these you can change. You could have a hedge 
And it doesn't change the quality of the fence or anything. It's just a nice little aesthetic. So originally it's these, which are fine, but I felt more farmy to have them be wooden posts. And the reason this is such a fine mesh is because in real life, uh, apparently alpacas don't really care. They're not gonna mess with a fence very often unless they are really stressed or have a really strong desire. This is more to keep the predators out and this should be like a no climb fence. So if I was really serious about it, I probably could even go ahead and change it to be no climb on that side. But that looks hideous. I really don't like that. So I really don't want to do that. <laughs> it looks gross. So we're gonna go with this. And uh, so that's that's what the why I have this as opposed to chain link. Chain link fencing is apparently too small to, or too big. The baby llamas can stick their heads in there. Um, and other fence types just aren't as good as these mesh types. So that's what that's all about. Whoop. I uh, threw a couple more of these covers around and I just copy pasted them. Uh, this one, no, actually one of them I think I made a little smaller. They felt a little large. And then again, Planet Zoo requirements. I, I needed to go ahead and throw another of these storage, quote, storage sheds over here because I do want to put some animals over here. And uh, so I had to go ahead and do that. You'll see we're using invisible paths, but man, they have these nubbins. One of the ways we're gonna get rid of some of these nubs is watch, if I take my invisible path here and I crank up the width and I like to use the brackets, hotkey, I can, you can see I can do this and then, oh look, all those went away. And then I just keep repeating it and I can get pretty good results by doing this. And you'll see that then we're left with just a few nubbins on this side that we can cover up with stuff. And so I'm gonna have to do that throughout because that looks a little silly and there's no way to get around all of them. There will be some of these wooden stumps in the final product, which is less than ideal, but you know, it is what it is. So that's how it's gonna work. But again, not a lot to show at this exact moment. I, there's gonna be <laughs> a pretty big jump uh, coming up pretty soon because I kind of got into a groove and I just went to town and I didn't think to save it, so, but you'll see. So let's keep trucking along. So hopefully you immediately notice some differences, some changes. Uh, hopefully it immediately feels a lot more alive and a lot more um, built in. So what I've done here, and this is, uh, this is, I actually, I don't think I've touched anything in this area. <laughs> I didn't touch the llama farm at all. I decided it was time to go ahead and clean up the rest of the file. So we went ahead and threw some crops in. Now I'm not going to do this in each of these fields because it would just be a total drain on resources, but we do. All I did was I took, I took, I think some bracken or some, not bracken, some bramble. No, this isn't bramble. What is this? This is... Crowberry. I took some crowberry and I just laid it in a big straight line and copy pasted it all the way to get this far, to get that field. Over here we have some bramble, so it's just a little bit different color, a little bit different texture. I tried to make sure I saved enough room here for a tractor. Um, that's kind of like you can see here, here's my tractor spacer to see is there enough room. And we should have a fence here. I don't know if I get to put a fence in, but you'll also notice the streets now have markings, um, some of them, <laughs> not all the streets. Uh, the two lane road wouldn't have lane markers, <clears throat> obviously, because it's a two lane road, but the four lane road does. And you can see the truck here. There is enough width for two truck, two vehicles. And here's our main intersection. And I did not finish. We, we still have to do the curve here because curves are a pain. But uh, yeah, it looks a lot more like a road. So now from here, from this angle, I think that looks really good. I, I think this is really starting to come together. I'm happy with how it's looking. And then uh, we did a lot of foliage work over here. I copy paste, I, I made, what I did here to, to make this come together pretty quickly is I made a palette, including some of the ones that were on the default map. And then I threw in some oaks and some beech and some other tall trees. And I kind of just took the, I hit I and I highlighted some and copied them and moved them around the map. And that's how I was able to fill in this rather large forested area. I think this does a good job of cutting off the, the, the realistic space. So threw this pond and this little creek in just to kind of eat up some space. And like I said, we still need to add the farmhouse. You can see I've kind of got an idea of where I thought it was going to go, but it's really probably going to go much closer to over here. 
and then uh, it will we'll throw in some extra storage for the farm and uh, that's going to be the next big jump so we're getting much closer now uh, the farmhouse is going to be in one giant just about one giant update so i'll i'll spend uh time talking through how i did that so let's take a look welcome to the farmhouse so this is inspired by a historic farmhouse and farm like acreage like 16 acre land for sale uh, in it was for sale in virginia and so this is an old farmhouse from the late 1700s, I think, that's been fully updated. And as you can see, it's pretty clear they would have been adding some uh, extensions on, some additions. And in the concept art, it, or in the, in the inspiration, it also extends this way. So I got the front done. I haven't finished the sides or the back or any of the plantings, but I give you an idea of how I see this working. So uh, what I did do, which is crazy, is if you look at the walls, they're all inset, and how did you do that? Well, to inset a wall, oh, we got a bit of an issue here and a little bit of an issue there. What we do when we inset is we, uh, you have to custom everything. So look, this isn't like, we have the brick wall texture in game, wall pieces, that's not what this is. These are individual beams, and you put them in, and you gotta get different sizes so you don't cover up the windows. And then the shutters are individual beams. These shutters are the DLC beams. Um, these are these are great. I love them. They have so many useful so many uses uh, So that's how I had to do this uh, These I did this with the custom uh, with the new DLC beams. This is, this is very beam heavy <laughs> But I am so happy <coughs> Excuse me with how this looks um, it, It's really it's really close to the uh, it's really close to the reference image which makes me happy. It is a lot of pieces. <laughs> like this part is 700, this part is 200. So you're looking at uh, about a thousand pieces. And then the walls or the windows are individual as well. Sometimes, like yeah, there's there's just there's a lot of pieces. <laughs> it's not a small build, and it was time consuming. This is not something I normally do. Usually because the time warrant the time necessary to do it doesn't warrant it. But in a smaller project like this, where I had the time, it felt like something that would be nice to do. And so that is my farmhouse. Uh, what we need to do to finish up here is we are going to put it in its location. We're going to garden it. We're going to make it look real nice. And then we're going to finish up with a really simple gift shop selling, obviously, like alpaca or llama products, llama wool products. And that's going to go right here. You'll notice I have this shed here. It's the vet shed. I actually kind of like it there. Um, even though it's one of those in-game blueprints, I, I don't think it looks bad. Uh, you'll see we got some llamas over here. So we got llamas all over now, but I want to leave some of these pastures open because they wouldn't all be used at once. That would kind of defeat the whole purpose. Um, so yeah, we're going to build a little shack here. And we're going to move this over a little bit. We're going to decorate it real nice. And uh, yeah, that's that's going to, then we're going to call it a day. We're going to extend our fencing. And then we're going to call it a day. I think that'll be good enough for this little llama farm. So let's go ahead and take a look at where the finished product stands. Here we have the finished product. This is our row ranch llama farm. Now you can see now we've done a lot of work to the house to get it to fit in. I scooched it over ever so slightly, gave it a nice long drive with a roundabout, and we paved using some nice brick, some nice herringbone brick all the way around. We have this patio area here. We have a nice deck, <clears throat> and this deck here, these stairs, this is new. And this is not part of the DLC. This is part of the free update, and it is great. Look at this. Let me show you how. To, oh, well, let me show you how this do. So if I delete this part of the steps, what I can do, if it'll let me, is oh, let's get, oh, that'd be cool too. Look at that. Ooh. So what you do, you have a new option here. You can go to elevated length, turn it on, and I set mine to 0.5 meters. So what you do, is you turn this all the way down like it's supposed to be. And that way, look, you can move them, boop, 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 right up there. And that's not right, but they will connect. That's, you can control, you can control the height of your uh, stairs now. So if I place a stair down and I have it go down, look at that, two, 
and if I make it one meter, it'll go down a little bit steeper. So you can create these really small landings. Look at this. I love this new feature. This is one of my favorite things, uh, one of my favorite parts of the update, and it's not even part of the DLC. It's fantastic. You can all do this whether you have the DLC or not. So that is a cool feature that I hope a bunch of you can use, but I did want to show it to you because it might be my one, another one of my favorite parts. My favorite parts of the DLC are the beams. My favorite part of the update are the changes to the paths. So yeah, there you go. I, I could have cluttered this up some more, but uh, I just... Uh, <laughs> I was getting kind of tired of it, and it was getting kind of late, and I wanted to move on. So we've got some nice elm trees, some big stately trees, the white picket fence going around the property. More storage, more barns over here. We don't know what's in there. Who knows? Maybe more hay. I don't know. But now we've got our llamas. We've got our, our uh, pastures all ready to go. We've got our beautiful barn all ready to go. And last but not least, we have like the jankiest gift shop on the planet. It is a glorified shack, but I love it. If you come to visit, you can see the llama gear sign right there. <laughs> and I did do a little interior. I uh, figured you would go in there and check it out. I, when I think of these kind of stores, I think of all these really random things that you don't really understand why they're there, but yet they're there nonetheless. Like, I love how claustrophobic and just there's crap all over. And I use a lot of the Indian pieces in here and some of the Christmas theme stuff from the Arctic pack to kind of add this just hodgepodge mess of stuff. But like you could buy llama, llama yarn, we're gonna say that is. And these were supposed to be beanies and cups and rugs made from llama fur or with hair, llama, and then rolls of, you know, just everything. And then you could buy prints, you can buy all kinds of stuff. So. That was kind of what I was going for here. And I did do just a tiny bit of lighting. If we switch it to nighttime, you can see just a little bit of lighting so that you can see inside. Let's actually make it nighttime. There we go, just a little bit to kind of show it off. So I am really quite pleased with how that all turned out. Uh, you can see if we zoom out, <coughs> You can see here's the final product. Again, I didn't do anything on this side of the map. I kept it all to this side, but um, I'm, I'm really happy with how it looks. And the animals are all functioning fine. Everything's working fine. Um, yeah, so this was my first foray into the DLC. Aside from the here's what's in the DLC. Um, I think it's kind of funny that I went in such a different direction, but this is what I was inspired to do. And hopefully you learned some interesting things especially with the beams and the bamboo. The bamboo makes great uh, hoses, and those beams are super versatile because they're recolorable, and there's three different sizes. They really are great. So this is it. Uh, with that being said, if you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and consider subscribing if you have not yet already. And with all that being said, have yourself a great day, great night, great whatever, and I will see all of you for the next episode of Planet Zoo. Talk to you later, everyone. Bye-bye.